in this tutorial I will show you how you can add bubbles to flip simulations. I will go over the problems you will encounter with things like reseeding and constant emission of particles and how to solve these problems. I will start with the simplest setup that works with emission on one frame and no reseeding. Then I will show you how to make it work with reseeding. And lastly I will show you the final setup that works with constant emission and reseeding enabled. This tutorial will only focus on adding bubbles. If you want to follow along you can either use your own flip simulation or download the scene file linked in the description. The simulations may look a little different but for all intents and purposes the process of adding bubbles is exactly the same. Alright here we have our flip simulation that we're going to be adding bubbles to. A few things to keep in mind is that I'm only emitting the simulation on one frame as you can see right here. Reseeding is turned off right now. Also make sure in particle motion behavior you have add ID attribute ticked on and you can also add edge particles which we're going to be needing for the future solutions. Okay so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to delete most of these points so we only keep a few points on which we can scatter spheres that are going to be used as our bubbles. The way I like to do it is to add an attribute wrangle, make sure it's set to points and type if at randomize at rand which is going to give us a random number between 0 and 1 based on at i at id and we can add a channel float seed which is basically going to give us control over the randomization if we don't like the random seed we got we can change that so this is going to give us a random and we say if that random number is bigger than our channel float threshold then remove remove point from the first input at pt num and we have an error because i need to close this off like that and now you can see we have nothing and this is because our threshold is too low but if we bump this up to 0 0.1 we are getting only 10 percent of our bubbles we can go even let's go even lower to 0 0.03 and now let's scatter spheres onto them so Let's add a sphere polygons. I like changing it to polygon. We can keep a frequency of two. You might want to bump it up if you're going for a close up or bigger bubbles. It's going to look like that. Let's add a copy to points. Copy just like that. And we have our, our bubbles that stick to our simulation. Now we, you're probably going to want to randomize the scales. And you can do that by adding an attribute randomize let's randomize the p scale i like setting this to custom ramp setting the minimum to 0 0.01 and the maximum let's set to 0 0.05 and we're going to have one issue is that the randomization is going to be different per frame and that's, that is because flip is giving us a random point number per frame as you can see on this point has 282 on and now 285 282 again, 281. So basically we, we can't be randomizing based on the, our point numbers, but what we can do is use our ID attribute that we've enabled on our flip sim. We can do it by going on our attribute randomize, going to options, seed attribute, and enabling seed attribute and using our IDs. And now you can see that there's no more flickering anymore. Okay, so now let's move on to the second scenario. And that's when we have Reseeding turned on. As you can see, I have the exact same simulation as we had before, but reseeding is turned on. Now, reseeding is, as I've shown you before, it's this setting right here. Now, what reseeding does basically, it's going to be adding points or removing points in order to keep a more smooth and realistic flip simulation. In this case, and in, in a lot of cases, what you're going to be using reseeding for is to be uh, filling in holes in your simulation. So this is our simulation without reseeding. And as you can see, we start having these, these holes, uh, for example, this one right here. And we might not want that, so and a good way to, so, to solve that problem is to add reseeding. So this is without reseeding, and this is with reseeding. As you can see, that hole isn't there anymore. Now reseeding, when it comes to scattering bubbles, are going to be causing a few problems. So let's go to our reseeded simulation, and let's try copying the exact same setup for bubbles, and let's see what's happening. So as you can see, it does work and we do have way more bubbles and that's because reseeding is adding points and we can just 
fix that by going to our threshold and saying let's keep less points but the problem that we're going to be having is that we're going to be having bubbles that just pop in and pop out of our simulation basically bubbles are going to be spawning and despawning in a pretty frantic chaotic non-realistic way i can even make it more clear if i go to my attribute randomize and i make the points even bigger and let's actually keep a bit less and you can see very clearly that we have points just that randomly pop in and just get deleted which i think looks pretty not realistic now the way i'm going to solve this is by basically deleting all of the reseeded points and the reseeded points are basically points that either spawned in the middle of the simulation or got deleted throughout the simulation which means that they didn't exist on the first frame or they didn't exist on the last frame so the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to be adding a retime and i'm going to freeze the simulation on the first frame so as you can see it's frozen on the first frame and i'm going to add another retime and i'm going to freeze it on the last frame which in my case it's going to be frame 70 as you can see it's frozen on the last frame and now i'm going to be adding an attribute wrangle and i'm going to compare the id attribute and i'm going to say that if the id attribute from input number from the first input which is input number zero if the id attribute isn't the same on this geo stream as this geo stream it means the point either doesn't exist on this stream or it doesn't exist on this stream in which case it means it's been receded and I want to delete it. But what we're going to write is we're going to write if i at id, which is basically our id from the first geo stream, which is from basically from our simulation. We can actually do it like that. If i at id doesn't equal to, and now we're going to use this very useful line, i at op input one, which is basically going to be retrieving an attribute from an integer at attribute from input number one which is the second input and the attribute that we want is going to be id so we type underscore id we close that and we just say if there's a mismatch if the ids aren't equal then just remove the point just like we did before and now you can see the difference if i put my bubbles we can bypass and you can see it removes a few bubbles and now it solves the problem of bubbles spawning spawning in because we basically say delete all of the points that don't exist on the first frame we still have the problem of bubbles getting deleted as you can see for this this one for example it gets deleted and we also want to solve that and the way to solve it is basically to do the exact same thing so let's copy that code one more time and instead of comparing the ids between the first and the second which is the freeze on the first frame we want to compare between the first input and the third input which is going to be the freeze frame on our last frame of the simulation so we just need to change i at op input one to i at op input two and that's, this is going to solve our problem and as you can see now we have perfectly smooth bubbles and we've successfully removed all of the receded points. If we want more bubbles now because we have deleted a substantial amount, we can just go onto this wrangle once more and bump this up and you can see it's still working. Now here we have another simulation with, and this one has constant emission. As you can see, we're emitting particles into the simulation constantly throughout the simulation. And this one has, right now it has receding is turned off, which makes it very, very simple to add bubbles we can just go to our first solution copy the same nodes paste right here and it's just going to it's just going to work there is not going to be any flickering because there's no reseeding now here is where it gets the most tricky is where we have a simulation that's constantly emitting and it also has reseeding turned on as you can see reseeding is turned on so let's try and copy the same solution that we had previously created for reseeding and let's see what happens and plug this in and as you can see we only get a very small amount of bubbles and basically what's happening here is remember we deleted we said we're going to be deleting all of the points that don't exist on the first frame but this is a problem because most of these points don't exist on the first frame you see only this these points exist on the first frame the rest of them are being emitted throughout the simulation so basically this part where we delete all of the points that don't exist on the first frame we can't be 
be using that. Now the second part where we say delete all of the points that don't exist on the last frame of the simulation, that is still working and I can show you that by just going to our wrangle here. We can just delete the first part, the first section of X and as you can see here we start to get more bubbles again and the only problem is that we get bubbles popping into the simulation but we aren't getting any bubbles deleting because this is still working comparing the ids between our simulation and the and a freeze frame of, of the last frame is still going to be working so we can basically delete this freeze frame which is freezing on the first frame we can delete that and basically we can use this and we only need to find another way to remove all of the points that are added into the simulation that basically spawn in randomly throughout the simulation. And the way I'm going to do this is by exactly the same thing almost, but instead of comparing to the first frame, we're going to dive into a solver and be comparing to a previous frame. And we're basically we're going to say if on a certain frame there's a mismatch between the current frame and the previous frame there's a mismatch of the id attribute it basically means that the point didn't exist on the previous frame which means that it just spawned in in which case we want to delete it so let's see how we actually we can actually do that let's go into our solver and plug in our first input into our output which is just going to give us the same simulation that we had before and now we're going to add an attribute wrangle make sure it's set to points we're going to plug in our previous frame into our second input and we're going to type if basically we're going to type the exact same thing once more i at id doesn't equal to i at op input one underscore id then remove point remove point from geostream zero at pt num now you can see that this still isn't perfectly working and it's actually giving us the exact same thing we had before and this is happening because once again we are constantly emitting points which means that for each point on the frame that it just spawned there's still going to be a mismatch of attributes between the frame that it spawned and the previous frame because it didn't exist on the free previous frame now the way to solve it is basically just to add another condition so let's type if at and this is where we can use age if at age is bigger to is bigger than let's say 0 0.1 only then i want you to actually be removing points so basically right now the code is going to wait until the age attribute is bigger than 0 0.1 which means that it's going to ignore the points that just spawned and it's going to be deleting only the points that basically have been reseeded but they haven't just spawned. As you can see this fixed it and now we have perfectly smooth bubbles. Again it, it blasted, it deleted most of them so we can just go to our threshold once again and we can add more. Now this does use a solver so we have to re rebake it basically every, every time but it, as you can see it's very very quick even with a lot of points it's still going to be very very quickly. So yeah, that's how you add bubbles to your flip simulation in all, all different complexity levels. Chris here again. We love bringing in new and interesting voices from the community to create videos for us. And the only reason we can hire them is the amazing support we get from our patrons. So if you want to see more videos like this and also get access to a ton of in-depth courses, please consider becoming a patron of ours as well. And to all existing patrons, thank you so much. Without you, Antagma would not be possible. Thank you.